From 1979 to 2007, the residents of the North American town Nako would hold a famous volleyball match. In the early years, the ball was in danger of bursting. Uh, the annual tradition stopped when conditions became too difficult to play. Why? That's a very carefully phrased question, because it says North American. Didn't say United States, it said North American. So I think that's like question long form for Canada. I think, I think this is going to be Canadian, which means I think we're up in the Canadian North. I, I don't know. Americans are famously humble. Uh, we like to, to share our continent with other people in other countries. So who knows? I'm wondering, I'm thinking like lightning storm, having a volleyball match in a lightning storm, if the ball has risk of bursting, or if we're going with Canadian, like is, is it like a winter volleyball game and it's a ball of ice? The, the ice is the ice is melting and they can't. Yeah, totally. It's in the Northwest Passage, and unfortunately, it's, it's just. Is the wet answer now. climate change? Yeah. For why it became too hard to play. That is that is not the answer. Okay. Uh, and it's also not in danger of being struck by a hockey puck or a Canadian goose. It's. Uh, is the material of the ball a significant clue? No, it is a standard regulation volleyball. What was the name of the town? Nako? Nako. Nako. And in the early years, it was in the risk of bursting. Sorry. Yes, that con the condition that was leading to the ball bursting did change over time. Are they on a submarine or in space? Uh, no, they are in the famous North American town of Nako. <laughs> I'm, I'm convinced that's Canada. I, I, I'm just... On land. On, on land. Okay. okay. I mean, yeah, it, 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 the location of the town is important. Why would a standard volleyball be at risk of bursting? Pressure? Like something about pressure, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So is it really high up? No. Nope. Is this a really high altitude town? No? Okay. Nothing to do with pressure. They played it with swords. <laughs> Oh, sword volleyball. No, no. And in fact, uh, this volleyball game was a way of bringing the community together. As opposed to swords that would split them apart. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, two, two houses divided, that sort of thing. But did it, was the volleyball game standard in other ways, or did they play it with any unconventional attire or tools? It, um, it was standard in many ways. There is one aspect of this game that was very unconventional, and it's not the apparel, it's not the size of the volleyball um, court or facility that they were playing they on. Played, instead of a net, they played it with something else. What constituted the net is important. Oh! Oh, hold on. It's Nako. The... Is this a border thing? So yes, it you is. said North American, so I'm like, oh, oh it's Canada to, for the question right to be tricky. But is this one of those? Is this one of those places where the U.S. Canada border goes through like a town, and the teams are on either side of it? Because that's a thing that happens quite a lot. You are very close. Okay. But why was the ball at risk of bursting in the early years? Because somebody was going to shoot it. Because <laughs> it was going over the border. You got to pay import tax on that ball every time someone sends it over the net. Uh, that is not correct, but that is the, definitely the right idea. Or is it U.S. and Mexico? I assumed it was U.S. and Canada border. Is this is this the U.S. Mexican border? But it was two. It was until two thousand and seven, so it has nothing to do with MAGA. <laughs> it is the U.S. and Mexico border. Right. Is involved. And the, and the volleyball game is over the border. The, the yes. middle of the game is the border. Cool. Okay. Yes. So, I, I mean, I think you've gotten almost all of it. There's only we, one we aspect of We haven't got the bursting thing. They changed the fence. Yes, correct. They changed the fence. It was at risk of bursting because it had spikes on top of the fence. If you, if you, if you wanted to spike the volleyball down the opposite team and you were a little short, it would hit the top of the border fence and burst. Correct. And so why would it stop in 2007? They raised the fence? They built a taller fence. Correct. They built <laughs> a, a bigger border wall so that they could no longer play the game. So uh, the answer is that Naco lies on the U.S.-Mexico border. And when the town was divided in two by the construction of the border fence itself, locals defiantly started to play volleyball over the border. 
and they were using the border fence as the net. And the border fence had barbed wire across the top of it. And so they had to cover the barbed wire with carpet so that the ball wouldn't burst if it if it got caught in it and punctured. But as security increased over the years, as it happens in the US, the height of the wall was raised and thus you were no longer able to uh, to play volleyball. They, they still do occasionally, but it's a very, very tall fence now and it's not not a regular game of volleyball. Mm. That feels sad somehow. It does. Um, yeah. <laughs> bring back bring back volleyball. In in Naco. <laughs> yeah. Make volleyball great again. Tom was, oh. you were right though. <laughs> Tom, you were right though that North America was the key phrase. It was, and I just forgot about Mexico, which does feel like a <laughs> metaphor for something. <laughs> 